好，那我们就来一题那个 academic discussion 吧 ，All right, OK。所以以这边来讲也是是一样，他 professor 还是会有这个 board 呃、uh, black board 哦，他还是会有一些关键字哈，他只要一 pop up 出来的话，那个就是各位同学啊，就是说要把这个相关的这个资讯一定要详细的听写出来。那呃，以这边来讲的话，同学这边我们有呃两个哈，我们这边有这个这个呃两个重点哈，两个这个 keyword here 啊，这我们在这个黑板上面有两个 keyword。Uh, the first one is laryn laryngeal habit. Okay, laryngeal habit. 另外一个是 idiomotor. Okay, so uh, why don't we go ahead and get it started? Let me go ahead and play the audio, all right? And get your notes ready, right, to answer the question. Okay, again, all right. 我们这个考点呢，哈，我们这些考点一定要去好好去做这掌握。Okay, 好，考点掌握到了之后，那我们才可以去好，考点掌握到了之后，我们才可以去好好的去抓出说这个呃，就是说他的问题要问的是什么，他重点是问的是什么，因为你不可能会。可以是从头到尾把这个 professor 所讲的资讯给写出写出来的。注意，我们这个 academic discussion 还多了一个，就是说插嘴准则了。Okay, so let's listen to this, shall we? Right, listen to this. Listen to part of a psychology lecture. The professor is discussing behaviorism. Now, many people consider John Watson to be the founder of behaviorism, and like other behaviorists. He believed that psychologists should study only the behaviors they can observe and measure. They're not interested in mental processes. While a person could describe his thoughts, no one else can see or hear them to verify the accuracy of his report. But one thing you can observe is muscular habits. What Watson did was to observe muscular habits because he viewed them as a manifestation of thinking. What one kind of habit that he studied are laryngeal habits. Watson thought laryngeal habits, you know, from larynx, in, in other words, related to the voice box. He thought those habits were an expression of thinking. He argued that for very young children, thinking is really talking out loud to oneself because they talk out loud even if they're not trying to communicate with someone in particular. As the individual matures. That overt talking to oneself becomes covert talking to oneself, but thinking still shows up as a laryngeal habit. One of the bits of evidence that supports this is that when people are trying to solve a problem, they you know, typically have increased muscular activity in the throat region. That is, if you put electrodes on the throat and measure muscle potential, muscle activity. You discover that when people are thinking, like if they're diligently trying to solve a problem, that there is muscular activity in the throat region. So Watson made the argument that problem solving or thinking can be defined as a set of behaviors, a set of responses, and in this case, the response he observed was the throat activity. And that's what he means when he calls it a laryngeal habit. Now, as I am thinking about what I'm going to be saying, my muscles in my throat are responding. So thinking can be measured as muscle activity. Now, the motor theory. Yes. Professor Blake,、um, did he happen to look at people who sign? I mean, deaf people. No,、uh, he did indeed.、Um, and to jump ahead, but what one finds in deaf individuals who use sign language. When they're given problems of various kinds, they have muscular changes in their hands when they're trying to solve a problem.、Uh, muscle changes in the hand, just like the muscular changes going on in the throat region for speaking individuals. So for Watson, thinking is identical with the activity of muscles. A related concept of thinking was developed by William James. It's called idiomotor action. Idiomotor action is an activity that occurs without our noticing it, without our being aware of it. I'll give you one simple example. If you think of locations, there tends to be eye movement that occurs with your thinking about that location. In particular, from where we're sitting, imagine that you're asked to think of our university library. Well, if you close your eyes and think of the library, and if you're sitting directly facing me. Then, according to this notion, your eyeballs will move slightly to the left, to to your left, because the library is in that general direction. James and others said that this is an idea leading to a motor action, and that's why it's called idiomotor action. 
an idea leads to motor activity. If you wish to impress your friends and relatives, you can change this simple process into a magic trick. Ask people to do something such as I've just described. Think of something on their left, and to think of something on their right. You get them to think about two things on either side with their eyes closed, and you watch their eyes very carefully. And if you do that, you'll discover that you can see rather clearly the eye movement. That is, you can see the movement of the eyeballs. Now, then you say, uh, think of either one, and I'll tell you which you're thinking of. Okay, well, Watson makes the assumption that muscular activity is equivalent to thinking. But given everything we've been talking about here, one has to ask, are there alternatives to this motor theory, this claim that muscular activities are equivalent to thinking? Is there anything else that might account for this change in muscular activity other than saying that it is thinking? And the answer is clearly yes. Is there any way to answer the question definitively? No, I think the answer is no. Okay, so that is that for the audio. All right. I, once again, I think this is a, a very interesting uh, lecture. Um, and at the same time, this is also, also an academic discussion. Now, what, uh, what this passage makes it different from other passage, the, uh, the previous academic lecture passage that I showed you before right, uh, in the previous classes is that um, it actually involves you know, interruption from students. So in this case, we have a student's interruption. Actually, interruption. Interruption在这个academic discussion里面是多么的重要了。Let's take a look at this part. 好,那我们就在这个地方就有这个题目了,老师就一题一题的跟各位同学run一遍。那请看一下我们在这边的这个第一题。So number one says, like, what is the professor uh, mainly discussing? OK,这个professor,这个很明显又是是,这个大纲体,主子体。那我们在这个大纲体,这个主子体一个很重要的这个一点,就是说很重要的其中一个点,就是说我们在这个,就是说我们一定要去同整这个我们这个整篇。好，这个 the uh, development of motor skills uh, in children. B, um, right, how psychologists measure uh, muscle activities in the throat, and uh, C is. Uh, uh, theory about the relationship between muscle activity and thinking, and D, um, a study on, uh, on deaf people's problem uh, solving techniques. So, is it like that? Let me go ahead and tell you something. Okay, all right. So, here we go. We can see that 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 we the see that we can see that we can see that we can a like what development motor skills in children, one D the study of deaf people's uh, problem solving techniques, okay, yes, one chance how psychologists uh, measure muscle activities in the throat. Chi Zimilajan 前三分之一、前四分之一的这个整个lecture去判断说他的这个主旨是什么 OK, let's go on and take a look at this He does talk about uh, this one 他一开始的确是讲到这个 laryngeal habit Laryngeal habit其实就是是这个 我们在这个 theory about the relationship between 
muscle activity and thinking。他说，人在思考这个过程中，这个喉咙上面哈，喉咙上面的这个这个这个肌肉上面的一个呃转换哈，喉咙上面这个肌肉上面的一些。呃，运作哦，其实是好、哦、跟你的这个想法、这个 idea 其实是非常相近的。所以这边来讲的话，他在这个地方他有一个，就是说提出了一个重点。不过这个是前面哈、哦，他提出有两个哈、哦，其实他这边就有提出两个啊、哦，在黑板里面他出现 laryngeal habit， 另外一个是 e d i o m o t o r 所以我们两个都要考量进去。今天我们如果是只有是听呃，只只啊、呃、考量到前面的这个部分的话，那有可能我们就会去选到 B 了。But no, it's really not that way. Let me go ahead and identify this as once again. 好，我们这个呃，我们在这个答案里面，这个呃，这这个 B 来讲的话 ，right, we would actually consider this as too, okay, too narrow. Okay, this is just way too narrow. Right, this is just way too narrow. Now the only uh, okay, the only answer that we have here is actually C, right? A theory about the relationship between uh the muscle activities and thinking, right? Okay, so uh, these two are what? One is just just say this laryngeal activity. The other is this iliomotor, right? Iliomotor. To say, okay, 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 所以说，我们一定要同整我们所听到的这个整个整篇这个这个 listening 的这个重点了。Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at number two, right? Right. 第二题来讲的话，说是 listen again to part of lecture by playing track six. Okay, so why does professor say this? 所以这边来讲的话，很明显的，好，就是说我们有一个 understanding function。所以没有错啦，我们这个题型上面来讲，以题型了哈 ，right？ 我们考点上面虽然是，我们考点在这个 academic discussion 是多了哈，我们其实是多了这个呃 rules of interruption 哈，这个学生去插入介入啊，就是说突然插嘴的这个准则，但是我们这个考点上面，我们这个准则上面啊，就是说呃，我们我们在这个考点上面，好，就是说有多了这个，但是我们这个题型命题方向还是是一样的，我们还是是在这个 academic discussion 里面会有这个所谓的这个呃 understanding function， 所以我们就赶快来听一下，就是说，哎，那我们这个我们这个 professor 他的那个啊语义用意是什么？所以我们在这个地方一定要好好运用解题技巧哈，来。好，解题技巧哈、哦，所以请各位同学好好的注意哈，我们这个老师之前所教导各位同学，在这个 understanding function 的一个重一一些重要的这个解题技巧了。OK， all right， so let's listen to this part of the lecture. OK， listen again to part of the lecture, then answer the question. Watson thought laryngeal habits, you know, from larynx, in, in other words, related to the voice box. He thought those habits were an expression of thinking. Why does the professor say this? You know, from larynx. In, in other words, related to the voice box. Okay. 好，我们我们先先先去看一下这边这个部分哈。老师有提到，就是说哈。呃，我们一些在 understanding function， 我们在这个 academic subject 不一定呃， both in both lecture as well as discussion 都会是这个样子的。We want to 呃、um, 呃、uh, first want to consider 呃、uh, well 呃、uh, what the professor is trying to express. So we want to consider everything. 好，我们要把这个前面好，就是说他啊他放的那个部分哈，他放那个前面那个部分好，都有那个那些资讯都考量进去。好，我们才去做这个答题的这个动作。我们不能只是依赖，就是说 ，What does Professor Ming Huang say? Is 直接从这个这个呃小部分去判断。我们如果直接从这个小部分去判断的话，那么我们很容很容易去答错。再来，我们一个第另外一个点是什么？哈，同学啊，我们在这个呃 understand function 另外一个重要的一个点就是是，只要是哈，我们在这个地方只要是哦、呃，就是说他的这个他所呃他在他在播呃他在播放。这个 professor 重讲的那个资讯这个过程中，如果是他符合老师之前传授给各位同学的这些准则，任何一个准则的话，那我们就以那个准则方向去走。OK， 我们再听一次前面这边这个部分。好，我们再听一次前面这边这个部分 ，professor 在讲解这个 laryngeal activity， 这个 laryngeal activity， 我们听一下这边。Listen to part of a psychology lecture. The professor is discussing behaviorism. Now, many people can listen again to part of the lecture, then answer the question. 
Watson thought laryngeal habits, you know, from larynx, in, in other words, related to the voice box. Okay, all right. 好，他说 Watson， OK， Watson 这个地方开头，他是讲讲讲到这个 Watson， Watson 怎么样呢？哈，我们再听一次。Then answer the question. Watson thought laryngeal habits. Okay， 好，这个地方开头，他是讲讲讲到这个 Watson。Watson thought laryngeal habits. Laryngeal habits. 好，怎么样呢？ You know from larynx. You know from larynx. Okay, All right. Laryngeal habit. You know from larynx. 他先讲到这个 laryngeal habit， 然后再说 you know from larynx。然后呢，他说这个。In other words, related to the voice box. In other words, related to the word voice box. 这边这个准则，它一直在转换，一直转换，一直转换。它从这个呃、uh, laryngeal habit 到这个 larynx. 呃、uh, ，All right. And then you know from the 呃、uh, from from the voice box. Okay. 所以它越转越简单。同学啊。这个是什么？一个简单的字转成啊、哦，一个困难的字转成简单的字的这个准则，很明显，我们看到的这边这个部分就是说，这个 professor 把一个困难的字转成简单的字，那么往那个方向去走的话，我们就可以抓到我们这个答案。再呃，接下去，他在这个部分 ，What does the professor mean when he says this？ 我们再确认一下就可以了。He thought those habits were an expression of thinking. Why does the professor say this? You know, from larynx. In, in other words, related to the voice box. Okay, you know, larynx. In other words, to related to the voice box. So, very obvious. This side, ah, is that is that we have this one easy word turned into a hard word. So, very obvious. He is that. Ah, we we if we hear the professor say that a hard word is turned into a hard word, it is very obvious. He is using what the professor is saying. 在解释，他会在解释说，呃，解释说这个这个词的这个呃这个词的这个这个呃语义是什么？啊，这个专业术语的这个语义是什么？来，我们再回去看一下哈。Let's go back, OK? Let's go back to the question right here, right? OK? A, B, C, D. Which one should be our answer? OK? So think about this. Which one should be our answer? A to give an example, laryngeal habit. To B to explain the meaning of term. C to explain why he is discussing laryngeal habit, and D to remind student of a point that he had discussed、uh, previously. 很明显，我们先看一下这边这个部分。很明显，我们就是 B to explain the meaning of the term. Okay. 所以我们照着这个我们这个准则去走。好，我们听到这个，我们听到这个呃，他在这个 understanding function 这个他所讲这个内容。